<laughs> you make it, I could make it sound as big as you make it sound now, but it, that's not my goal at all. No, I'd love to be a, a, a spokesperson for uh, keyboard players, but I just want to have fun, right? And I think um, the things we came up with enable me to have more fun on stage and to actually entertain people and not just play a show. I think when people come to see a show, uh, that's the main reason why Sabaton is this big and Ghost and Power Wolf and, and, and you know, they want to see a show. And they're not going to see a show if there's a piano player sitting behind a keyboard trapped. Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians, talk all about their lives and music while sharing a craft beer. I hope that you had a killer weekend. I most certainly did. This Vox and Hops episode is presented by Heavy Montreal. Heavy Montreal are Montreal's premier metal promoter, and they have a bunch of killer gigs coming up within the next few weeks that are going to be hitting Montreal, such as the monstrosity of a show that will be taking place on December 3rd. That's right, I'm talking about a Monomarth Carcass Obituary and Cattle Decapitation are coming here in Montreal. It is going to be such a blast. I cannot wait for this show. If you haven't already, go grab your tickets. Head on over to Heavy Montreal's website. I've put the link in the description of this podcast. I'm beyond stoked to have Heavy Montreal behind the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I would just like to ask you to follow the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast on the podcast platform of your choice. But more than that, I would love for you to tell a friend about the podcast. If there's someone in your life that just happens to be a killer keyboardist, killer pianist, well, let them know that the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast exists. You can tell them that there are over 380 episodes where I sit down with some of the world's best metal musicians. We talk all about their lives and music while sharing a craft beer. If you would encourage one of your killer pianist friends to become a brand new Vox and Hops head, that would be something that I would truly appreciate. Now, today on the podcast, I'm very stoked to be joined by by Kuhn Janssen of Epica. Get ready, everyone. This is Vox and Hops episode number 380. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today I'm with Kuhn Janssen from Epica. We are recording this live at Place Belle here in Laval in Montreal. This is a Heavy Montreal Presents Vox and Hops episode. How are you doing, Kuhn? I'm doing great, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool day. It's really nice out. Unbelievably weird. We are late October, yeah. and it is just gorgeous. Uh, one of those days where... Do you, do, you, do you do Celsius? We are Celsius here. I think yes, we're, we're, we're like in 2020s 20 today, 20 Celsius. Yeah, it's, it's, and uh, I love... The fall, mm -hmm. especially when the weather is good. Hell yes. It takes me back to my childhood when we, uh, my parents took me to the islands of the Netherlands, actually, as it's really nice nature over there and uh, like beaches. Amazing. And we always went in the fall, in the, we call it like a fall holiday. Uh, it's one week and we uh, went there on the beach having fun. And actually now my parents took my children because it's the Amazing. holidays now. You know, I'm now working, of course, but... <laughs> Oh, man. And then being out here, 20 degrees, it's it's great. Well, I'm glad that Montreal can give you at least that. <laughs> well, it's so good to be... Uh, I, I don't know if I should say that. So we've, we've been in the U.S. for five and a half weeks. And now the, there's one Canadian date, Montreal. It somehow feels like home. Hell yes, that makes me very happy. I have not been over to the Netherlands for a few years now. Cryptopsy's been busy writing an album. We're not really on a touring cycle right now, but we will be back over there. Uh, Vox and Hops is all about hanging out with my metal friends, talking about their lives and music while sharing a craft beer. We are very lucky today because uh, Trudz Dialb gave us a whole assortment of a bunch of their products for us to enjoy throughout this chat. Uh, being responsible, seeing that you have to play later. Let's just share one beer. Uh, why? <laughs> there are a bunch of styles here. I don't know what style we did, of we brew didn't, you like. That's not what you promised. <laughs> share one beer. We can each have our own beer, but I, I, well, what style of beer do you like? And I would, I will suggest which uh, one of these killer mm. the albs you should be having. I, I really am an uh, India Pale Ale guy. Perfect, yeah. But then we're going for the, uh, the McTavish. It's a pale ale, an American pale ale. 5%. Uh, you can crack this one. I uh, graciously brought you a Vox and Hops glassware right 
there, brand new. I'm stoked to have those. And for myself, I'm going to go for an old classic, uh, one of the beers that I really think uh, launched a lot of stuff here in Quebec, uh, the uh, Gat Surfer, the Apocalypso, the Four Surfers of Apocalypso. Nice play on words, obviously. This is a, a white IPA, but it's sort of fruity, and I think it was like sort of one of the first sort of hazier, fruitier beers, the I, the whole New England IPA style that's going on here that's just crazy and the rest of the world, too. Um, but this is one of the first. So I'm going to crack this. You crack yours. Let's pour these out. Let's do a cheers, and then we'll move on from there. Cheers. Cheers. Hell yes. Yeah. So we got these poured out. Um, gorgeous. They look, both look amazing. Mine smells Juicy, a little bit of bitterness going on there. I like it very much. Cheers to you. What a shitty job you have. <laughs> I know, I know. Look, look at me inventing reasons to drink <laughs> beer in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, I, I became a musician to do that, but the, this is better. See, I was a musician. I am a musician, yeah. but I, I invented like an extra reason when I'm not on the road to keep doing it. So that makes me very happy, and I'm glad that you agree with me. Um, shittiest question I'm going to ask you. I typically kick things off with that. A lot of us do. Uh, how did you cope with the glorious years? plural of 2020 2021 half of 2022 hopefully not the rest of it and most certainly hopefully not of 2023 how have you been dealing with these wonderful times um let's say i didn't mind taking a break from touring uh, because i have a family and i enjoyed being with my family of course it's uh, been a little bit difficult uh and doing other stuff but I was in the, we are in the privileged position that we could uh, actually survive pretty easily. We have a, like Epica as a company is run very responsibly uh, by ourselves. So we uh, had a lot of uh, savings, uh, I would say. So we, we, you know, we could sit out the pandemic. Of course, we were able to do uh, cool stuff like our streaming show that turned into a Blu-ray and uh, our biggest show yet. And actually we kind of like uh, had the chance to build that show and also evolve into that uh, live act. So kind of uh, take ideas that we had there and bring it on to the live show now. So I think it was not all bad for us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, of course, the home situation, the homeschooling. Uh, I, know, yes. I know nicer stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, spending time with our children is, is a privilege. It's a privilege. But They're I, you know, only young for a certain amount of time. It so is. the most amount of time to spend with them is the best amount of time, no matter how irritating it can be at certain times as well. It, it was difficult, and I'm glad that we are on the road again. But now having you know done five and a half weeks, I miss them as hell. Yeah. yeah. So I uh, uh, yeah, wouldn't mind another week of home. <laughs> <laughs> Being very careful about this. No. <laughs> Uh, I've been great, and I've doing I've been doing keyboards for other bands as well. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, uh, w while recording albums, not playing live, so uh, yeah, it's, for me it was okay. It is strange how bands were so on. So before the pandemic, we're constantly this cycle, yep. this album, this tour. So being granted that time off gives you sort of a the privilege and the permission to build something such as the live stream show you did, where you guys upped the production, yep. which is something you've always wanted to do. And you're like, oh, we're going to do it, but oh, let's just finish this album first. Oh, let's just get on this yeah. tour first. Are we going to buy that new light rig? And like, no, no, we'll, we'll get it on the next one, right? So it's interesting how the pandemic gave you guys the privilege and time to do that. Yeah, and I think if it, what you were telling or what you were saying, if it wasn't for the pandemic, we wouldn't have made the choice to invest in this production, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, because right before the pandemic, and that's the story we always tell, so everybody's talking about 20 to 22, right? But in 2019, we thought it was a good idea to take a sabbatical of touring. <laughs> <laughs> so we added another year. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If, we, if we knew that before, then we you wouldn't have, have hit it harder. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we were just finishing our new album, Omega. Mm -hmm. Actually, only vocal recordings were left. And then the pandemic hit. So uh, yeah, it was, it was strange. But... We couldn't like couldn't tour for the album. That's why we made the live show. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then you re-released all your old catalog as well. Well, that, that, that we did this year. So actually, mm -hmm. uh, Omega should have been released, I think, in 2020. Mm -hmm. It was eventually released in 21. Mm -hmm. And then we did the live stream show. Uh, or the stream show. It wasn't live. Otherwise, p people will kick my ass again. 
<laughs> but in 2022, this is our uh, 20th anniversary this Amazing, year. Yes. So we did uh, a lot of celebrations, actually. And one of those was uh, re-releasing the first, uh, well, in the end, five products we did. And the fifth one being a DVD from 2006 that we uh, haven't released before because of legal reasons. I understand. Yeah. The but fun now, things about being in a band, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, well, uh, well, it's 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 not a secret. Just before uh, we we recorded the DVD after our second album, just before release, the uh, record label went bankrupt, mm -hmm. and um, we didn't have any rights to it. So mm -hmm. he, uh, the the old record label, released uh, like did a few re-releases of the first two albums and stuff, and then remixes and and all this stuff. But he never tend to uh, re-release or release the DVD. And now we got the rides back, so we could do it. Well, congrats on that. Lots of good things happening in the Epica front. Uh, but I would love to hear, it's Fox and Hops, we've got to talk about beer just a little bit. Uh, what Do you remember your, your first beer that you ever had, Kun? I remember it, yeah. And it was bitter, <laughs> and it wasn't really... Uh, and I think my mom was really hoping that I wouldn't like it. And that made me actually try it again, I think. So I said, ah, no, you don't like it. It's, it's going to be bitter. It's, it's, you know, for grown-ups. And I was a kid. I don't know the exact age I was. But I remember where I was in the living room uh, of my parents' house. And it was a, some sort of party. And it was a brand called Brand. So uh, it, it's uh, still actually my favorite normal Pilsner. Really? From Holland, yeah. yeah. Uh, how much do you hate Heineken? Uh... <laughs> Well, Brandt is from Heineke. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So, but they they have their own brewery, uh, right? So interesting. Yeah. yeah, but uh, as much as I was telling, I like Montreal. They put a lot of cans of Heineke in the. the Heineken is very well marketed. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, it's it's one of the uh, maybe one of the biggest beers in the world. Uh, well, the thing is, it's not really cool to drink Heineken in Holland because of, you know, there are so much more beers. But, you know, it's a good beer. It's really well marketed, um, but it's not my favorite thing. <laughs> the uh, Going from that bitter first beer, did you ever step into the world of craft beerism? Is it something that you've become um, enthralled with the way that I has taken over my life? Because Holland has a, has a killer craft beer scene. Everywhere there's a craft beer uh, scene nowadays. I remember... I think it was in Australia, and it's about, I don't know, was it 2015, could be, that somebody introduced me into the world of Untapped. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's where it started. Really? Yeah. You know, I, uh, I wasn't really much into craft beers, more into just local beers, because, well, there you have the Heineken thing again. If you're from Holland and you're in a venue... Uh, people think you want Heineken, so mm -hmm. they put the fridge full of Heineken, and we don't want that. No. So we rather have, you know, for instance, when you're in Poland, you just have like the local Polish beer, and everybody will say, you don't want to drink it, it's crap, drink Heineken. I say, no, we want the other stuff. Even if it's crap, you know, it's, it's different. Yes. So, uh, um, but then because of Untapped and because I travel the world, I could like easily win Slay badges everyone, over. Yes. <laughs> so it's we a, do have a slight yeah. upper hand in like geographically conquering Untapped. <laughs> so then you know, then then you everywhere you get, you try the beer you didn't had before. Exactly. And I still do it. Awesome. Yeah, and, the, and that's actually the the, the best thing. Well, not the best best thing. <laughs> Good thing about touring the states. They have so much craft beer, so much uh, bars with like all of the taps and like the different, uh, how do you say it? No, but also like they the have like 10 different uh, taps. Uh, exactly. Uh, open varieties. Right? Yeah. yeah in, in, in Holland, there's maybe like two and there's then and Heineken and some other beer. Exactly. And you can get bottles. And of course, there are craft beer cafes. Actually, mm -hmm. our guitar tech his dad owns one really? in uh, Roermond and uh, so we kind of like he also is on Untapped and he's all over the place <laughs> because his dad really you know gets all the beers from uh, like different he has, always has like different IPAs on tap and then very cool yeah and he's you know able to try it all the time <laughs> the sacrifices of, of, of you know someone has to make sure it's safe yeah. for human consumption <laughs> why not us um, moving on uh, your your mom showed you the pleasures of beer classic Vox and Hops question is I'd love to hear about the soundtrack of your youth when you're growing up in your parents or guardian's house what music did your parents listen to 
Oh. When you were not controlling the radio. Uh, we didn't have much music in ours, actually. Really? Yeah. Uh, the only thing I remember is classical music. Mm. Sunday morning uh, brunch. Uh, well, it sounds really uh, church-like or something. It was, it was all, you know, it was all good, but yeah, they, they put on the classical records. Uh, one of those stuck to me, so we covered it on our classical conspiracy album. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and uh, like a general radio, uh, so we have a radio one, two, and three in Holland, and a radio two is for the like uh, uh, a little bit mature. Okay. Well, mature. More out of the box. Adults. Okay. No, no, it's it's not for the youth, not for the already dead, but in between. Right? I understand. Contemporary. Contemporary yeah. music. Yeah. So like <laughs> like Sting and and yeah uh, yeah normal pop music, not over the top popular, but. Yeah, the evergreens. I, I read that you started taking piano lessons at eight years old. Correct. Yeah. How much were your parents involved with that decision? Very much. <laughs> <laughs> I think 100%. <laughs> were, 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 was there any interest of yours to, yeah, to be gravitating uh, towards the instrument? Apparently, apparently there was, but you know, I don't really remember. But we uh, inherited the piano from my uh, grandfather, mm -hmm. who was a, a musician, a pianist, a choir director. And uh, apparently I was... Was now playing with it all the time, mm -hmm. and it's quite normal for Dutch kids to, uh, besides school, go on music lessons. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, you know, we had a piano, so it was piano for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister is who is two years older than me, also took piano lessons, uh, same as me actually. And uh, she ended up studying uh, astronomy, and I ended up studying conservatory. So, but she can play. She is. She is. She was a like a, a reader from music uh, sheets. Sight reading. Sight yeah. reader, and I'm I'm not good at that at all. So I had to play by ear. Really. And that actually uh, made me, I think, uh, find the interest in in playing stuff from the radio and and. Very interesting. Just the fact that you can hear something and then automatically. Well, get not, it. not automatically. I, <laughs> I, can I, can also, I can also read, but not that good. <laughs> okay, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about your first shows? Do you remember the, your first music experience? Like going to see a show? What would be the first show? The, like you being wow. young, the first live music experience? The f really first, well, the, the first one I really remember is uh, I th uh, it should be Metallica in, uh, in, in Holland. Really? Yeah, I would be in the fifth grade, so I would be 16, 15, 16, 17. Amazing. And that was the first one. I, re I Before I went to uh, festivals, I guess, too, right? And uh, we had a lineup on that festival of Rage Against the Machine and Sepultura. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's pretty. But I remember, I remember going to Metallica, and at the first song, I just kind of busted something in my neck, so no. I had to like move back to look at it. It was the, it was the one where they played in the, the, in the middle. The snake pit. Yeah. That was so sick. It was great. Yeah. So exciting. Did you have like the vibe then that this is something you wanted to do with your life, or was it just pure spectacle and being enthralled with everything going on? I just really liked Metallica, <laughs> and just like was overwhelmed with what they were doing and, and seeing them live. Yeah, but I never actually looked at a show and said, "Oh, that's what I want to do." There was never that for no. me. For me, it was like automatic. That's actually weird. I never thought about it like that. There was never a moment that I said, "I want to be that guy," because there, there never were keyboard players. I know, right? I know, and especially not in heavy music. But when we, we, you know, when when I started to listen to uh, uh, symphonic metal, it was kind of mm -hmm. like, ah, this maybe could be something for me, and, and started There's some space for me yeah, in metal and, finally. But I never, oh, I oh, also never expected to be here, right? Because it's it's like one in a million chance, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it, it, you know, it grew there, yeah. and we worked hard, and, and 20 years later, here you are talking about beer, sharing a beer with me at Place Bell. Yeah, it's actually pretty crazy, but. Uh, yeah, as we always say in the Epica world, uh, you can design your own universe, right? So uh, we worked really hard for it, and uh, um, we tried to be our best. And we, uh, you know, I studied music and, and never had the intention to be the best ever. But uh, we're still growing, so you know, I'm really thankful for that. You did indeed study music. Uh, you did two years in one of my favorite cities uh, in Tilburg. Yeah, I love 
We just uh, uh, played our 20th anniversary show there. At 013? Yeah. Oh, fuck, it's I one love of the that best venue. venues. I love that venue. venue. And then, of course, when you finish playing the 013, you always have to end up at The Little Devil. The Little Devil. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had many of too many a nights. We had Little our uh, our uh, album presentation, uh, though be it very uh, pandemic-y. Mm-hmm. We had no, it over there. That yeah. yeah. yeah, was fun. Very fun cool. little cafe. How about your first time on stage? Do you remember your first show? I imagine it must have been like in school. Uh, yeah. you, you were doing the recitals, I imagine, for stuff that you've learned. Re- recitals at the music school. Yeah, I remember one specific. Uh, moment when I fucked up. That's that's what I what I remember. <laughs> it happens. Playing Bach, you know, and then uh, it, it it's all muscle memory, yeah. I think, because Bach starts and then stops when it's over. Wow! And it doesn't really stop in between. No I understand. Pulse. There's no breaks. No. Yeah. So it goes on and on and on and on and on. And suddenly I I, I messed up and I didn't know where I was because it's muscle memory but if it starts and stops five minutes later uh, what happens I so I started over again same moment it was gone so then I uh, you know full recital I don't know where <laughs> I was 12 or something and so I said no, fuck it and then I went went off stage Oof. and that was the moment when uh, I think my uh, piano teacher saw something else right then instead of just playing music that I don't really um, I don't act as as other people. As, uh, it's not that I'm special or something, right? But then she saw that maybe he needs to do other stuff than just classical music. But maybe it's just more improvising and being mm-hmm. a more of an entertainer-ish thing. And then that, a robot, because typically yeah. classical pianists or musicians. I have no room for interpretation. You're you're really just a robot yeah, performing you sh- something. You, you, sh- you should use the interpretation that is written. Exactly. Right? And uh, that that was what I hated on classical conservatory mm-hmm. is that there was room for interpretation, but only the one from the teachers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not the ones from yourself. That's not metal at all. Until you are until you are uh, a celebrated musician, then you can. Uh, use your own interpretation, yeah. Mm. So it's weird. Weird world. And typically, once you are well-known enough, it, it's after we're dead. In classical music, In classical sadly. music, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, always, I always remember this conversation with my uh, conservatory teacher, who is, of course, a phenomenal piano player, which I will never reach in my whole career. And he said, uh, so what else music do you like? So he was full classical, right? Yeah, I like uh, uh, metal. And then he was, what, metal? (laughs) So he had classical music up here. Way down there was jazz, right? Mm -hmm. And then below there was pop music. Below that was rock music. And below that was metal. You know, he didn't even... He he didn't even want to listen to it that there's actually like symphonic stuff going on and and Mm -hmm. actual orchestras used. He didn't even want to know about that. And then he's probably still like in this little room in the conservatory. And I'm in uh, Montreal. We're a Place Bell in Montreal. Hell yes. Look at you. Congrats. You, you can fun. cut that out if, you, if <laughs> no, I can't no. say fuck on You that. can say whatever the fuck we want. It's ah, my podcast. Fuck yeah. <laughs> the Alchemy Project. Um, a very cool release. Something completely different. Um, very um, adventurous. Yeah. Huge endeavor. 13 guests. People from Flesh God Apocalypse, Camelot, Yuri Heap, Shining. You got uh, Charlotte Wessels, X Delane, Merker, uh, Mayan, Speed from Soilwork, and Night Flight Orchestra. I love that band. <laughs> uh, God Dethroned, My Boy Zven from Aborted, yeah. uh, Winter Sun, Insomnium, and Power Wolf. That's a massive, massive project to pull together. Yeah. I'm just curious, like, even like the seed of how this all came together. The seed is the pandemic again. Because mm, everyone was home. Yeah. And we have these, uh, like, uh, weekly meetings uh, on Skype, right? Because everybody in the band lives in a different part of uh, Europe. When I spoke to Mark, I think he's in Sicily. He's in crazy? Sicily. Yeah. yeah. Simone is in Germany. Isaac is in Belgium. And the rest of us are in Holland, but not close to, to each other. So we have, uh, like, uh, every two weeks we have a Skype meeting. It's actually brilliant that to just make sure the band is still a unit and on track. It's a business. It's a business. It keeps on going anyway. So you have to make decisions. And uh, we are still, we have a manager, uh, but he's only by himself. So management is us and him, which works really well. And uh, we were just sitting down and, yeah, what we're going to do, the world is going to lock down. Uh, anybody has ideas? Uh, and then... 
actually this was an idea by Isaac, the guitar player. Um, he said, yeah, well, let's try to write songs together with bands we like. You know, we have time off. We can do whatever we want. Everybody finds somebody he's interested in writing a song with. And you see where it goes. And then in between came Omega Alive. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> so it kind of like was put on the shelf. Put on pause on the back, the back burner, as we say over here. There. And then... Uh, me especially was very it was totally uh, involved with Omega Alive so I didn't have time for anything else uh, but in the back uh, still people were already like throwing out lines to other musicians and after um, Omega Alive we thought well let's pick it up again because there's a 20th anniversary coming along nice way to celebrate it yeah, yeah. we have we have to do some celebrations we have of course we have the show we're going to do the re-release but we want to do uh, new material as well it's always good to tour with a new record too though yeah but you know I don't think we can tour with this because we have to bring all the guests everyone <laughs> <laughs> no but uh, we wanted to do new stuff as well and uh, um, so I was not much involved in the writing process uh, I think Rob wrote two or three songs Mark wrote, wrote two songs uh, Simone wrote one with Char Charlotte and that's about it I guess well, it's pretty Aryan, Aryan wrote one of course uh, together with uh, uh, Henry from Goddy Throne mm. that, that's uh, the track that I'm most interested about because I'm, I'm from the death metal world it's uh, a banger it's under three minutes it's uh, so you know the, the rules were there are no rules <laughs> so everybody could, could write what they want because Epica is Epica right it's mm -hmm. always going to sound like Epica so Aryan first said okay I'm going to write a song and he pointed at me you're not involved oh <laughs> Then he pointed at Simone, you're not involved as well. <laughs> Fuck you. Because <laughs> Sven, Sven is, I've toured with Sven, I've had on the yeah, podcast, yeah. he's a friend, um, i played with God the Throne. God the Throne makes sense to me because the Dutch connection. Oh, well, Ar Arjen wasn't God the Throne, Isaac wasn't God the Throne. Ah, yeah. okay, interesting. They, they've been together in God the Throne before playing an epic. Interesting, so that, that, that makes sense. But the Sven, how Sven fit into this, the little Belgian boy? Uh, Sven is from Belgium, as is Isaac, and the ah, okay. Belgian metal scene is not very big. tight yeah aboard it is uh, uh, uh sven is a good friend of daniel our manager and also a good friend of us uh, he helped us uh, do some uh, merch designs uh, once in is. a while yes he's up crypt ups as yeah. well yeah. and uh he's just uh, you know because because we know each other from the scene and I, I i think he's a great guy i actually did merch for them at hellfest once really back in the day when they had uh the other Sven as bass player. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he was at my school, as were Isaac and Arjen. Very interesting. At the, the, the Pop Conservatory in Rotterdam. They're, that's where we know each other from. And uh, we played, and they played the day after, and they didn't have a mercher. And I thought, well, then I can hang around and do your merch. You know, it's all it's all interwoven. It's amazing. It's yeah. like the Montreal <laughs> metal scene and music scene is very similar. We're all yeah. connected. So, and then, you know, when uh, Arjen wrote the song together with Henry, because back in the day they wrote songs together too, and then, yeah, we're going to have a, like an extra singer on it. Sven. Amazing. Uh, do you want to? Yes, of course. Yeah. I yeah. think it's super cool. And I think, uh, and I know this is not the reason why, but I think that the coolness of it, I'm not sure if you guys have realized it, is uh, the rap world has been doing things like this yeah. for many years where everybody's collaborating and then everybody's sharing the content. Yeah. And then more ears end up falling upon the project and will eventually fall in love with the main project which is Epica at this I point. think that's what we are learning now actually what to, just just what you're describing we are we are learning that um, everybody's sharing it and also the other bands and fans and, and it's actually doing great so I'm already interested in doing it again mainly also because I didn't actually uh, write get to stuff. participate in it is there this is a good question I didn't have this question but now I have a question is uh who would you invite? Well, it's a good question because I uh, I actually started out with Nilo from Insomnium as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they're great friends, and uh, I just played keys on their latest album, which is yeah. going to be released. So uh, I would love. Uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of that band, so I would ask him. But then when Rob wrote the song with Asim from Winter Sun, um, and we needed another singer for it, uh, I, I I said, well, just ask Nilo. Uh, you know, he's a, he has a great voice. So the, he has already ended up on the album. But Marcus from Insomnium and uh, what's the other band? Omnium Gathering, yes. where he plays in. Uh, the, I think he's a great guitar player. Would love to ride with him. But, you know, of course, with a lot of other people. Like, I, I would actually maybe try to do something ridiculous and see where it ends up. Like uh, with, with Neda from uh, the, the accordion player who was in, um, what's the name of the band again? 
tourist us or something. Yes. Yeah. I would love to write and see what that would end up or or with uh, some mm. some power metal maybe you know with with Tommy or, or Chris from from Sabaton would be Hell great yes. yeah, see what that ends up. I would love that. Yeah. But maybe for next time, right? There's always a next time. Another 20 years. Who knows? I love it <laughs> oh, very, very much. Another 20. Uh. <laughs> uh, something that uh, has sort of like, you mentioned it, and as soon as I heard I was speaking with you, it's the question that came to mind. I started like, I, I knew you. I, I, you've made playing keys cool. So, so oh, thank you. Like, it's a hard thing to do to make. <laughs> and and it's, I, I, I say that in the nicest way. Guitarists to look cool, but you crowd surf. You got that killer custom keyboard from uh, New Motion. It's so fucking damn cool. So, so talk to me about making keys cool again. Uh, you know, John Lord obviously did a really good job at it mm -hmm. with Deep Purple back in the day. But is it important to you to make keys cool again and to make young people that are playing, discovering piano, and then not finding an identity in metal having a place to like resonate towards? You make it, I could make it sound as big as you make it sound now, but it, that's not my goal at all. No, I'd love to be a, a, a spokesperson for uh, keyboard players, but I just want to have fun, mm. right? And I think um, the things we came up with enable me to have more fun on stage and to actually entertain people and not just play a show. I think when people come to see a show, uh, that's the main reason why Sabaton is this big and Ghost and Power Wolf and, and, and you know they want to see a show and they're not going to see a show if there's a piano player sitting behind the keyboard trapped, trapped. almost yeah and you know there are there are bands that they just put the keyboards side stage and nobody sees them yeah yeah we just <laughs> so we, we just went to see Iron Maiden uh, the other day and apparently they have a keyboard player I thought it was tracks no but you know I, I just like to have fun and if it if it helps helps people to choose to play keyboards cool right but it's not my main goal in life. Well, I definitely think it's going to happen. I hope so. Yeah, I it would be great. Yeah, and uh, I, I think every keyboard player should have uh, the possibility to walk around and to uh, have some uh, spotlight on them, right? And we try to do it with. Uh, I, I try to do it with the Revo. The, the keyboard is actually a Canadian. Amazing. That's why you were with them earlier tonight. Yeah, because I uh, my mine was a little bit uh, busted from touring uh, that much, so I got a new jumping one. jumping into the crowd, and they gave you a new one. So they're good for yeah. them. Yeah. So I'm hoping uh, it will uh, not jam and, and stuff to not tonight because it jammed all the time. So I have a new one now, and uh, uh, you know, back home I have the rails that go around the drums. Uh, so and I have a rotating and it's all wireless so I can do Amazing. whatever I want yeah it's really cool yeah and it, you know it makes it makes performing so much more fun so you don't uh, you don't see you don't have to be jealous at the guitar players and, and the bass player just walking around the freedom. And pointing at people the freedom. And I, yeah. I can do whatever I want yeah it's great good for you I think that's very very interesting I had this for later but I'm going to bring it in right now um, you seem to be sponsored by two companies Roland and the, the New Motion yeah. How is that permitted? I don't feel like guitarists are allowed to do that. I feel like they have to choose, no? Um, well, sponsored is also a big word nowadays, mm -hmm. I think. Because um, New Motion has 167 followers on Instagram. Yeah. And, no. and Roland has 338,000. Yeah. So. Well, Roland is a big company, yeah. and I, I had contact with Roland uh, Benelux, mm -hmm. and uh, they provided me with some material. Uh, back in the day, it's you know it's pre-pandemic. It was before uh, of, or during our previous record, the Holographic Principle. So it's been seven years. Okay, I understand. And, uh, you know, I didn't really. Uh, I needed a new for for like for the thing we have the the rotating stuff and yeah. uh, uh, the wireless stuff. I needed a new setup, and they helped me, uh, giving me the right uh, machines to do it right. And then our our tech uh, had to had to come up with all sort of new electronics <laughs> to make it actually really wireless to make it work. work. Like, yeah. For instance, the sustain pedals, they yeah. you know, they don't exist wireless, but I need it because otherwise I can't spin the thing 360. Because yeah, the wire <laughs> yeah. will fuck everything up, yeah. Uh, but they helped me a lot, and, you know, I played, I still play that keyboard, but, yeah. you know, that keyboard is not really their main product anymore. I understand. So yeah. I'm not really 
a face of a company. Yeah, at this exact probably moment. nobody uh, is going to buy that keyboard anyway because it's like it's a big workstation with cost two thousand dollars or something. And I, I don't think that if a kid see me play it, that they I want that one. <laughs> but this new one though is pretty fucking cool. That the 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 new motion one. Yeah, there. yeah, the Revo. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. and then we, I was just talking to the to the guys, and I've I've had it for ten years now. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I've already had it. The first time was also in Montreal. They came to me in two thousand twelve. Go Montreal. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And uh, I still love it because that that's actually a guitar you can play with two hands because, you know, the guitar, which is oh, pretty lame because it, everybody has it. <laughs> and then they came up to me with this concept. And I said, yeah, of course I want it because uh, I cannot play the guitar because other bands have it. So I'm, I'm going to be a copycat and now I have something for myself. Perfect. On brand, I like it. Yeah. Identity on stage. And it's from Montreal. This is a Heavy Montreal Presents Fox and Hops episode. Talk to me about Montreal. We spoke about it a little bit at the beginning of this. What does Montreal mean to you? I know that Montreal loves Epica. What is Montreal? What is Epica's relationship with Montreal? It's always the biggest show of the tour. Really? Us. Yeah. Uh, Montreal's always the biggest one. And uh, yeah, true. Uh, also today, I think it's going to be the biggest. It's not Sold our tour, of course. Out. Yeah. But fans are great. Uh, what I told you earlier, it feels like coming home because mm -hmm. it's so European mm -hmm. compared to the US. Uh, like uh, Celsius, meters, and, and like actual catering, you know. Uh, Go Montreal. When we came into the dress room, there was already stuff there. Yes. Instead of wa having to wait until 6 that they put stuff in the fridge. Go Montreal. You know, it's the tour's been good, but it's always some... Yeah, it always feels good to be in Montreal. My brother-in-law uh, lived here for a few years. Really? Yeah, he also studied astronomy and he worked at the uh, university, I think. That's amazing. Yeah. So there's a connection. I like that very, very much. Something that's very important to me, I've been doing it the past few months on the podcast, talking about mental health. Now, I know that you're really into CrossFit. Um, <laughs> Not I, right now. <laughs> no, no, working, we're working on different parts of our bodies right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about mental health and the, the importance and what you do to pull yourself out of a slump if ever you're not feeling well. And then a secondary question is, if one of your bandmates or one of your friends is in the dumps, what is your tactic to pull them out? Oh, let's start with the first thing. Um... CrossFit helps. I think I, I started actually doing more sports during the pandemic as well. And uh, as of now, I'm not doing it. So I am really hoping to uh, get back at it next week. <laughs> um, once you get back home, that, that's what you yeah, mean. Yeah, once I get back home, yeah. Uh, there, uh, there's a nice gym and, you know, I can go whatever, whenever I want. I brought my stuff here, but I just didn't feel like not going. even once. No, I do that sometimes not, too. Not even once. No. I'm lucky I have Flow because we work out a lot in cryptopsy, but Flow vigorously, methodically organizes workouts for the whole tour. Basically, you can join Flow, so you just need to tour with cryptopsy, and we'll, we'll keep you I, in shape. I, I yeah. hope that would happen too, because I thought <laughs> that, that the guys from Sabaton were like fit boys, but nah. <laughs> didn't happen <laughs> no no i just didn't feel like it this time and that, that's all good right i uh, came came to terms with that and yeah. um i try to eat healthy as possible um but that's about it on tour you know usually i i go to hotel gyms work out you know there's some few good apps uh, crossfit apps yeah, that absolutely. build your yeah. workout in school i always bring a jump rope for do the double unders but uh, that's it and i skip everything with burpees in it <laughs> I love it very much. But mental health, like like uh, if ever you're not feeling well, you you throughout the pandemic you turn towards CrossFit to start moving. Yeah, but but men mental health. Uh, I wish you could. I wish I had some interesting thoughts about that, but I don't don't really think about it. I came to a conclusion on this tour because uh, it's good to, you know, how how much I hate being away from home for six weeks. It also gives you a little bit of uh, perspective also you know like how you see how, how, how your family functions for instance and i i think i came to the conclusion that i should do less at home and spend a little bit more time uh around the family and not being and not, not working all the time so i i took too many jobs or had too much to do which uh gave me too much trash which reflects on the family, of course. And I think I should keep it a little bit more light in the coming years. That's so, an excellent observation yeah, to make. Yeah, so I, I hope this works. Of course, 
this also comes from a place that I miss them really, really much, right? It's also, and as you're saying this, and I would do exactly the same thing, is when you're on the road, do you not take any, do you not work and do these extra jobs when you're on the road? I actually am doing an extra there job right go. now. <laughs> and uh, I was going to do it on the road so that I didn't have to do it at home, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't work on the road. It's tough. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm doing keyboards for another band again, right? I understand. For an album. Yeah. And I, I worked on it, but then we had a lot of bus problems the first half of the tour and a lot of uh, 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 times we arrived late at the venue. So everything is rushed. Yeah. So then you don't, have, you don't have time to do anything. I so I, didn't, I couldn't do as much as I di- uh, would have done. And I'm not going to rush it in the, in the last weeks as well. So I'm going to just go do it at home, which, is, which will be fine. I have time enough. You can't rush creativity. It's not. No, no, yeah, and it's not. It's not necessarily all creative creativity. What I need to do, but um, it's going to be fine when I'm at home. But I just need to balance it out a little bit more. I understand. And I understand. I, I, I think because we haven't been touring for five years, uh, I came now to the conclusion again. Since you're touring again and you've been, you are away for uh, a lot of time, that uh, it's good to have time off. Yeah and be away and of course my wife now has to do everything by herself so when i go back you know i'm gonna take over and she can take a break take a break because after three weeks we're going again <laughs> <laughs> but anyway you know it, it's, it's, it's the relationships that we have when yeah. we step into a relationship with people like us but i think it's also good for the relationship because because you uh there's uh, a saying absence makes the heart grow fonder yeah yeah well that is what it is yeah. right but you also People that never spend the night without each other, mm-hmm. right? They, I, I know people you know, from where I live. They, they never, after their marriage, they never spend the night alone, ever. You know, it's, it's going to be weird, too. So if one of your crew members, one of your band members is down in the dumps, what is your tactic to bring them up into the light to make them feel better? Uh, give him space. The, the, the only thing you don't have on tour is space that and, is true. and privacy. Um, we are not a band that has uh, like separate hotel rooms on day offs. We just have two shower rooms. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a money thing, of course. And if somebody's not feeling well, then, you know, they can stay in the room for the night or, or whatever. And just try to take care of them. We, 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 we are kind of a tight family, I think. We have a slightly different crew with us now because of different reasons. Because everyone's on tour right now. Yeah, yeah, but uh, somehow the, our, our normal crew, they all had something else and or couldn't on make tour. it or didn't Everyone's get a visa on tour. or whatever. The exact yeah. reason why your bus was not working properly because that bus has been yeah. on tour nonstop yeah, yeah, it since is. it was yeah. allowed to be. <laughs> but, you know, uh, we, we, we are actually quite friendly towards each other. Um, we do things together, but we also know when not to do things together. I, uh, I have a very close relationship with Isaac. We go out together, right, and, and maybe take our distance from the other guys a little bit more. And, yeah, you know, we've known each other for 20 years, so it, it's, it's kind of like a family. So it, it comes natural when somebody needs to cheer or, yeah, we just, it goes naturally. I, I, I love that. Yeah. I love it. Family, family first in Epica. Yeah, and it's good. It's also good for that family that we had like a few years off. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, true. just like taking a break. Yeah, going on tour, of not being at home. Because it's everybody true. I know, you know, before our sabbatical, before the pandemic, we were kind of like uh, having to move on the tip of our toes. You know, just just not. Yeah, this leads me to ask: Do you think if there was no pandemic, there would have been member changes? No, not not, not member changes, not at all. But we had we had a, a sabbatical anyway, right? Mm-hmm. A chosen, a chosen sabbatical. Yeah, yeah. The sabbatical and the pandemic made us uh, hungry again. And you, n- I noticed that being together again was lighter afterwards. And that was mm-hmm. easier. Because everybody's uh, battery is fully loaded. I like that very <laughs> much. You've made a beer collab. I love collabs. I've made probably 80 collabs for Vox and Hops throughout the past four years. Uh, you guys made a beer collab with a Belgian brewery called Kazmatan. Kazmatan. Did I say that right? Kazmatan. Um, I heard it was good. I, I read some reviews. Uh, it's got the, the, it was biscuit malt forward. It was had uh, the honey and citrus going on. It's on your website. That's how I got <laughs> <laughs> talk, talk to me about this beer collab that, and how it came to be. It's also Isaac again. He yeah, was approached. He's from uh, Ypres, which is mm-hmm. pretty close to West Vleteren. I played Ypres Fest once. Yeah. 
And you know West Flater, of course. Um, West Vlateren. That's the best beer in the world. You okay. know it. I probably drank it at Eperfest, but I don't remember. I don't know if you can drink it everywhere. It's... Okay. Uh, is this Trappist? Yes. Uh, that they make uh, in that uh, monastery, or how do you call yeah, it? Yeah, that's and, perfect. Yeah. yeah, and you can only buy one, uh, one. I don't know if it's a six pack or a 12 pack or whatever. Yeah. You can only buy one each, and you have to call on <laughs> Wednesday morning. From, really? From, yeah, from 10 to 11, you can call them, and Holy you have shit. to pick it up by yourself. And I think it's it's one of the highest ratings on on tap as well. It's really good. So they have a. a so this brewery made your beer. Or just that, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the legendary West Flater Brewery, right? It's, Got it. It's legendary. They have a commercial side. It's called Saint Bernardus, and then uh, the uh, they have a, a, a different branch that's Casamata. So you have the really. It's a really famous Saint Bernardus brewery. And Kazamat is like an independent uh, uh, brewery connected to those. And they are from the same area where Isaac is from. Which is how the conversation yeah. got rolling. And then they uh, brewed a beer for us. And the first one tastes like shit. Really? Yeah. Did you go in and like taste it? No, they, they send us some uh, some stuff. It's not that we like actually went in and said we want those hops. And no, exactly. Let because people, we don't know. Let people that are experts do yeah. their jobs. So. And uh, they wanted to make a really good drinkable beer, a uh, thirst quencher, how do you say it? Yeah. Perfect. yeah for yeah. festivals. So really light actually, and but you can keep on drinking it. And it feels really good. And the second one was actually nice. Yeah, I really love that. And that's what it became. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. If you could make your own collab, what beer would that be? You, you, were, you were looking to this before the, we, we decided that you were going to drink uh, the McTavish. Uh, what, what, would, what would be the perfect beer for you? I would go for an IPA, uh, for sure. And um, there's this brewery in Holland called uh, Venters. And it's a brewery by my uh, wife's uncle. He has a brewery. Really? Yeah. He was uh, he was one of the guys from the Gols Gols mm -hmm. brewery who had to go worldwide and uh, like make sure that the recipe was correct everywhere. So he he really knows uh, stuff about beer and he created his own brewery and they make really cool beers. And um, I would go with with him and try to make a nice IPA, which is uh, not too heavy, uh, and uh, but has a nice bitterness, I, I think. Yeah. Amazing. Do you have a favorite hop? No. And what would you call this beer? I don't know. <laughs> I think there's so much. <laughs> I, I really like that, how they came up with new uh, new beer titles, right? I like I like the, the when there's puns in it. Right? Yeah, 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 me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I wouldn't know one uh, uh, from the top of my head right now. Uh, how is Mark doing with his cold adaptation? I had Mark back on uh, back on the podcast on episode 247. Oh. This is going to be episode 380 something, I imagine. Wow. So, so how is he? How is he doing with that? He's still doing it, actually. He, he built a pool uh, in Sicily and puts ice in it, which lasts for a minute, I think, because it's always warm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so he's not actually doing cold <laughs> adaptation. <laughs> no, but he, he did. He actually, uh, the first day of the tour, he, he arrived a day early and he, it was in Seattle and mm -hmm. he, uh, he went into a lake. Yeah. And the other day he did the same thing and he's the only one wearing shorts uh, up until now the whole time. And that's also a thing that he, it's not really comfortable, but he just wants to wear shorts. And pushing I his wear body. shorts today too. It's beautiful today though. Yeah. They're, 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 it's not working for him today. Axe throwing. T talk to me about axe throwing. Uh, how much fun was that? That's cool. a good band. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have the French word defoulement. That's a, um, a way to let off steam for a band and crew. Yeah. Uh, it was Paolo's birthday, uh, our tech. And he uh, wanted to do something American. <laughs> and we went, yeah. And we went uh, axe throwing and there was a place in Amarillo. We had a day off. And we went there, and there was nobody. Really? Yeah. That's uh, super cool. And actually, online it said that it was uh, fully booked, but they uh, said there was something wrong. And we came in, well, and they were super friendly. They never met anybody outside of Amarillo, I think. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we uh, rented a lane, yeah. and, and, but we kept on throwing. I mean, they Amazing. brought Ninja Stars, and they brought... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun, yeah. One last question, classic Vox and Hops wrap-up question. It probably doesn't happen to you very often, but I most certainly hope that it happens tonight, mostly tomorrow. What is your hangover cure? Oh, I'm not going to be hungover because I'm going to want to have a nice flight home. <laughs> I had a few hangovers this tour. And like two or three 
and just sleep in. So uh, what I like to eat is, is a toasty, and you would call it a grilled cheese. And I think it's really weird because you're not grilling the cheese at all while you're grilling it. But that's why I, mean, I couldn't come up with it. But We're melting the cheese. Melting the cheese. So you take two slices of toast and put it full of ham and cheese and turkey and whatever and toast it. And then with a lot of chipotle mayonnaise. Hell yeah. yeah. So you just have to eat and then slowly wake up, drink a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Cool. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me, talking about your life, music, craft, beer. I hope you're going to have a killer night tonight. It's just going to be amazing. Place Belle, uh, Heavy Montreal Presents, Sabaton, Epica. It's, it's awesome. Massive cheers to you. This has been really lots of fun. Uh, I hope you had a good time, too. Cheers. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right there. You know that I love and appreciate that. Man, this was awesome. I have had an event like this on my bucket list since I started the podcast, recording an interview backstage at an arena where one of the local hockey teams plays. What a bucket list to have crossed off. So stoked to have done that. What a better artist to have done this with. Kuhn was just so goddamn cool, so humble, so honest. And when I posted the pictures that Mihaela Petrescu Fox and Hops' photographer took that night. I got a message from my friend Chris Kells of the Agonist saying, how cool is the Epic crew? And damn, Chris was 100% right. Kuhn was just so goddamn humble. What a great laid-back conversation we had in a giant arena. It was just so, so cool. Very stoked on their new material, The Alchemy Project. What a cool idea to bring together a bunch of musicians that you've always wanted to work together to create something new. I think that's goddamn awesome. The Alchemy Project dropped on November 11th, and you haven't already, go check it out. It's so goddamn cool to watch a band flex their styles and dance around in a little bit of areas that they haven't gone before while still remaining underneath the umbrella of what is their brand. Super cool. Go check it out. The Alchemy Project is a banger. Now, if you enjoyed this Vox and Hops episode, you should sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast mailing list. You can do that on my website, voxandhops.com. That's V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S.com. And when you do that, you shall receive one email a month that will contain all of the details of everything that has been happening recently in the world of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. You will get to see which episodes I dropped recently. You will get to see which episodes I have coming up. You will also get to see which albums the Vox and Hops album review crew have reviewed recently. You also get to hear about any projects that I have in the works before I announce them to the public and trust me I always have a lot of stuff going on you will also get to see which albums Jerry Monk Vox and Hops' Metal Architect has added to the Brutal Awakenings playlist which is available on both Apple Music and Spotify. Trust me, if you're looking for any new music to listen to, well, check out the Brutal Awakenings playlist. Jerry just has an ear for brand new music. He has his finger on the pulse of what's going on in the world of metal. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. You will definitely find an album that you will cherish forever. There's just so much going on in the world of the Vox and Haas Metal podcast. I'd hate for you to miss a single thing, so sign up to the mailing list. The Vox and Haas Metal podcast is brought to you by Sound, Talent, Media, and Everything green podcasts i hope you have a killer rest of the week i will be back on friday with another episode but until then remember to enjoy life metal and craft beer cheers fox and hops hits oh,